Hi guys, what you see below you is my Space Cowboy XLR for Superlight. And as I said on my previous video, this quad originally weighed 210 grams. And it was kind of sat there without a camera, um, really doing nothing. Um, so I thought it'd be nice just to give it a bit of an update. Um, drop the weight, weight a little bit um, and just make it relevant again. Um, it was a really good quad, one of my favourite quads. Um, and I just felt a little bit guilty about having it sat there on a shelf um, gathering dust. Now, when I spoke about this in my original video, the plan was basically to drop in a micro camera um, and just shed some weight. Subsequently, I kind of sort of had a bit of a rethink and decided to put the run cam split into it. And if you've seen my last waffle video, you know that yet again I hit more issues with the run cam split, which changed everything. So the run cam split kind of defined a lot of the way this was built. And albeit the run cam split isn't in it now, the rest of the build um, really remains the same. So because I was planning to put the split in this, I needed to really build um, a very low stack um, and use a flight controller that had a, a, a basically a beck which could support the VTX, the camera, um, and the run cam split. And one of the issues with the run cam split, um, the actual board itself, is it gets quite hot and it's also susceptible to basically um, electrical noise, um, not so much via the input itself, but kind of the electrical field which surrounds ESCs and wiring, wiring in general. Um, so if you find you've got a lot of um, interference in your FPV feed using a run cam split, it's quite often because on a small build like this, um, your components are too close together, so you kind of need to keep its wiring and the board as far away as you possibly can. Basically, if I just turn it on its side, and I don't know how much of this you'll be able to see, but we've got an incredibly low stack here. Um, basically, this stack is comp comprised of two um, ports, a 20 amp 4-in-1 ESC, which was from Banggood, and a micro Omnibus F4 um, with a 3 amp back, which is basically the updated version um, of one of the Omnibus F4s I used in some of my original micro builds. And the idea of using these guys is it would A shed weight and B give me plenty of stack height. I don't know how much you can see, plenty of stack height to add in um, the run cam split, which it did. The run cam split fits here with bags of room um, and it was absolutely fine. And as I said, I chose these this particular board because it has a built-in 3 amp voltage regulator so it would have had more than sufficient power to run um, the DYS um, VTX and uh, the run cam split. Now, obviously given the failure of the run cam split, I've just dropped in um, a run cam micro um, swift i think this is the version 2 it's got the osd cable um, and this has become a really sweet um, simple build um, these little boards work really well if you do them nicely enough and the one perk of a frame like this which has um, basically lipo strap cutouts is you can attach your lipo strap kind of through and around which frees up the base plate and the way this whole thing is basically attached because there are no 20 mil um, holes in this particular um, this particular frame is the whole thing is just basically mounted on 3m foam tape um, two layers of it so the so basically what I've done is I've um, put ele um, electrical insulation tape along the bottom of the frame below the ESC and then I've attached the 4-in-1 ESC using two strips of um, 3M double-sided foam tape. And then I've um, basically just run screws upwards and used a couple of soft mounts between the two boards um, to take away any vibration. And basically the reason why I did this is just to bring, make this stack as low as I humanly could. Obviously now the run cam 
um, splitter's gone. I've got acres of space if I wish to um, increase the stack height. But that's a really good tr trick to um, to know. You can run a micro um, a micro board or a micro um, four in one ESC on any frame, even if it doesn't have 20 by 20 mounts, just by using um, 3M foam tape. And the 3M foam tape um, has quite a bit of um, anti-vibration properties within it itself. So when I've done this in the past before, I've never had problems with vibrations getting to the board or oscillations or anything like that. So it is a relatively nifty trick. Um, the 3M foam tape itself sticks down really, really firmly. Um, and it can be relatively difficult to remove. And the reason why I added the insulation tape below that just makes it easier to remove um, these components if I wish to do so at a later date because it's easier just to pick up the end of the um, end of the insulation tape and lift the whole thing out than it is to try and mess around removing the 3M foam tape from the, from the carbon of the frame. Um, so it works really, really nicely. The, the rest of it is, is pretty simple. On these particular micro boards, there are no motor inputs, so you need to use um, basically the connectors um, which come with the ESC. So basically everything is just running from uh, the cable connector here to the cable connector on top on the side of the, um, of the, of the F4 flight controller. And then you've just got the wiring running from the run cam split directly to the board and the wiring running from this guy running direct to the board. I haven't bothered um, using the 5 volt output on this simply because I don't really feel the need um, and it makes for a cleaner build in this particular case just to run the wiring straight from the camera. Um, it's got the HQ V1S um, three, uh, sorry, 4 inch props on it which as I said in a previous video are my favourite um, pound for pound um, 4 inch props. Um, I sometimes use the um, Dell 4045V2 as well, which are heavier than these and not quite as good, but they are more robust. So if you're planning to fly really fast or you practice some, um, some tricks, the, the Dell V2s um, are, are easier to bend back in place, whereas these, while bendable, are a little bit more, um, a little bit more susceptible to damage. And they tend to sort of splinter as opposed to uh, as opposed to bend. So I've done nothing else really to this. I've left, as I said, the DYS um, VTX in it, um, and that this, although this is a 200 milliwatt um, VTX, it actually outputs 800 milliwatts, um, and that's the reason why I, I originally liked this um, VTX. There's nothing fancy on it. Um, I've left the Pagoda antenna on, and basically the weight as it stands at the moment with everything that you see. Um, I've even put um, Velcro on the bottom simply because on these smaller quads it's really easy to lose your battery um, and there's nothing worse than losing your battery, losing your buzzer or, um, or D-Shot ESC um, beeper, losing your FPV feed and you've got a tiny quad somewhere in the long grass. So um, with the um, with the Velcro strap, obviously all the, the bits of it, as it, that are on it, as you see, the props, etc. Um, the all-up weight is 284 gram. Uh, sorry, 284, 184 grams. Um, so the original build was 210. So we've lost quite a bit of weight, um, and it should fly really, really well and be pretty, pretty quick. If I want to sort of shave weight even further, then I can simply remove this antenna. Um, possibly move the uh, remove the VTX and possibly put in a VTX or three or um, a smaller um, VTX with a UFL connector and then just use the Axie um, UFL um, antenna or the Demon RC V antenna that you saw on my um, on my Zero S3M uh, and basically they would shave off another 10 or 12 grams from this build weight um, so. Pretty happy with this. Um, it should be more than fast enough for what I want, which is basically an everyday flyer. Um, and one of the reasons I like four inches, they kind of sit nicely between um, three and five inch. Um, a five inch quad is is relatively agile, um, but very sort of accurate in terms of the way it flies. Um, a three inch quad 
um, if you take the Zero S3M for example, is incredibly, incredibly fast um, and an absolute blast to fly. But when you get down to the really precision stuff, um, tiny gaps and things like that, um, they're harder to control um, simply because of the shorter, shorter, well not wingspan, but, um, but arms. Um, and on a four inch quad, you kind of get the best of um, both of those worlds. You get a quad which is more agile than a five inch quad but not as kind of um, imprecise as a, as a three inch quad. Four inch quads have fallen out of favor a little bit um, because everybody's sort of obsessed with flying two and three inch um, micro quads. But with the tech that we've got at the moment and the new stuff coming out, um, they're definitely worthwhile looking at because all those sort of all in one flight controllers, etc., cetera, um, the, the micro stuff that we're just beginning to see really play into the strengths of um, a four inch quad and because you're using 14 or 7s you're not getting huge voltage spikes or any of those things which tend to be more of a concern on a on a on a bigger five inch quad when you're using all-in-one boards um, the reason why I always prefer to use two boards and a separate VTX is simply the more things that you cram into one single board the more issues that you'll potentially have in terms of video noise interference oscillations but more importantly for me, cost. You know, the, the flight controller, I think this one was about 15 quid. The ESC was about 20 quid or 25 quid. If either of those break, and they often do when you're bashing around, it's a pretty cheap replacement to um, to switch it out. You know, if I'd have gone for the micro equivalent of an Asgard or those all-in-one ESCs, um, the Nox 32 is the, is the one that seems to be doing the rounds at the moment, and there's various others. They're great, but the minute that you hit a problem with them or something fails, you know, replacing the whole thing to me is just a, an expense I could do without. So I prefer to have everything in separate components as much as I can, and it also makes it easier to diagnose an issue. You know, if there's an issue with a flight controller, you can easily work out um, where the issue is coming from as opposed to everything being in one and kind of worrying or, or not being sure what the problem is. So yeah, so this should fly really really well obviously the only footage i can show you will be um, dvr footage um, but i'll put some of that up when i get to fly it properly and otherwise cheers for watching and happy flying thanks guys bye bye